baptism was done in the name of Jesus. Chapter 8 was done in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 10 was done in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 19 was done in the name of Jesus. Let me name the scriptures where anyone was baptized in the names of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? None. There's not any scriptures where it says that they were baptized in the names of the Father, Son, of the Holy Ghost. It may seem that it is a hardship and it is a hardcore situation to pray and to read the Word and to be an everyday progressive, but oh, I find a scripture that tells us to seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. We found that Esau there where he sold his birthright. And people today will be the same thing. You'll not have power. That's why it's so needful tonight that you must and you should in order to stand. You should and you must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you. Let's turn to the word of the Lord if you would uh, this afternoon. And uh, I'd like to read out of the book of Psalms 119. And let's, let's begin with uh, verse 26, if you'll turn there. And I do, uh, once again, appreciate you being here today. And I do appreciate our uh, uh, people that are watching online. Uh, we do miss our others uh, that have not uh, been able to be in the house, Lord. And some of them have been tuning in. Uh, I know uh, we, we do appreciate and miss them. And, and we're praying uh, for them. Uh, to get back uh, real soon. I'm just praying for this to, to just to, to, to move out. I, I, I think we just need to bind together, and as I mentioned, just pray this stuff out of here. Amen. Amen. I think there's a lot of people that probably help us out. They, they want to do that too. Amen. Psalms 119 and verse 26, if you'll look at that. Scripture it starts, I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. How many need strength today? Amen. And so it says, remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck Unto thy testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it until the end. How many want to keep this and make it to the end? And verse 34, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law, yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. It's saying enlarge your heart. Now it's saying keep it with your whole heart. And verse 35 is where I'd like to take the text from today is make me to go. You can kind of see why I've been talking about this. In the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Another word for delight could be love. So Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, the word. In other words, for therein do I love, I delight. Do you love and delight the word of God? And I, I would just like to just kind of preach just this afternoon just a simple thought. And uh, that is just, you've got to love this. You've got to love this. Amen. Let's just ask the Lord to bless us. In Jesus' name, God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for this group of people. Thank you for all that you've done. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I gotta, you got to love this. you got to love this. Amen. You can be seated in the name of of the Lord. There are things that we love. We uh, was in the store the other day, and Sister Chloe said, Daddy, it's fall. I said, yeah, it is. And she said, let's get a pecan pie and a pumpkin pie. I said, okay. Uh, well, 
I, I, I said, I don't know about all that, but we don't need that. And she said, but it just is fall, you know, and I love pumpkin pie and pecan pie. She said, I love it. And so she just, she kept saying that, and I think we ended up buying uh, a pumpkin pie, and uh, she was uh, true to her word. She loved it, and because uh, she ate quite a bit of it, but she loves pumpkin pie, and it just seems like uh, everything this week, I don't care if it was a Rice Krispie treat, a cookie, or a piece of candy, she would just stick it in her mouth, take a bite, and say, I just love fall. <laughs> So everything was tasting good. Maybe it's just because of the, the, the season. There's things about this season that we love. I love the cool weather. Of course, it kind of warmed up a little bit on us, but it's been nice to uh, wake up and it be cool, and it's been nice to be comfortable during the day, and then it's nice in the afternoon for it to be cool as well. Uh, we uh, was outside. It's amazing what kids think of in terms of fall and things, and you know, sometimes uh, these things can happen throughout the course of the year. It can be in the summertime, but it's just something different. We we, we just kind of stood outside. Sometimes we'll just walk outside, and and uh, Brother Adrian, he said, smell that smoke. Somebody's burning firewood, you know. And somebody's uh, light, uh, got a fire lit, and about that time you could hear geese flying over. And so there are things that, you know, uh, that, that just kind of happen that uh, whether it be sight, sound, taste, those things that kind of remind you of uh, this time of year. And so, but it's things we love. And of course, people are really starting to, 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 to get into uh, already the holidays and, and things like that. I, uh, I have to get in the mood for Christmas. <laughs> I just, uh, I mean, I love Christmas and all of that, but, you know, it's a, to me, it's like a mood thing too, you know. Uh, that you, you try to get into, and but I, I love the joy, I love the peace, and I, I, I love the sounds of Christmas, and I love portraying the uh, the Christ child. I love the story of Jesus, and I love the true story of Jesus. It's not anything that's made up, but I'm thankful for the birth of Jesus Christ. And so, there's things that we love. Uh, I know many of you love to hunt, and uh, you're, you're you're probably getting ready to. Uh, to, to go and try to uh, shoot uh, that buck. And, uh, you know, there's just things that we love. Uh, John 14 and 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. I, people today are breaking promises. Uh, what do you tell your kids? What, what do you tell your 18-year-old that will look, look at you and say, Daddy, you know, how do you trust somebody that's been lying this whole time? How do you trust somebody that's uh, conniving with other countries and doing all manner of things? And, 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 and you know, how, 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 that's why the Bible says don't put your trust in man, but put your hope and put your trust in God. Some men uh, trust in chariots, but I'm going to put my trust in God. Chariots mean the things of this world. I'm going to put my trust and my hope and my faith in God. You know why? Because he's already proven time and time again that he can be trusted. Amen? In my life. My dad used to always say, you know, I'll trust you until you give me a reason not to trust you. He may have got that from somebody, you know, down in the past there for the family, but he always told me that. And when, he, when I got the keys to the car, and I, 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 you know, he said, you got a curfew. He said, now, if you break the curfew, he said, then you don't get to go back out, you know, again, or late, and, and uh, it, was, it was amazing because, you know, I, I never was one of those to just go out with friends and go, put, but if it was church, he didn't matter what time it was, just let me know, it, it, and what it was, I found out later that he would call the pastor and say, well, we're there at the youth thing or something like that, and said, yeah, we just got through, and it's about 11 o'clock, you know, and, but there developed a time when he just trusted me, you know, I, uh, um, and, and so we, we, we trust God. And we should trust God, but we should love God uh, enough to want to keep His commandments. You would never want to hurt somebody you love. Uh, I know there's probably been times, maybe, uh, I'm talking to the husbands here, maybe that she didn't make probably the best meal, that it probably tasted the best, but 
even though you should have been truthful and honest, you just didn't want to hurt her feelings, you know. Amen. <laughs> you just kind of went with the process there, amen. And because you love her and you don't want to hurt her feelings, you know. It's kind of like, God, I don't want to hurt his feelings. So I want to keep his commandments. Well, I'm getting some strange looks here on this one, boy. Amen. This is a psalm uh, that we, the, the book of Psalms, by itself, like none of the rest, David wrote these downs as, as they occurred. As David experienced life, he wrote these things down. Uh, and he, he, he wrote these things even towards the latter of his days, the end of his time. The book of Psalms is treasures of praise and worship unto God. I, I consider the Word of God a treasure. It is a treasure. And it, it, it's something valuable. I, I would be really upset, you know, if, 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 if somebody took my Bible and did something with it, it. It hurts my feelings when I look on the news, see somebody burning a Bible. Because this is something I treasure, that I love. I, I can think of things that I've lost. I can think of things that I've been disconnected with. But there's nothing like the Word of God it's a treasure. It's something valuable. And so David wrote these things as they occurred in his life. And they were experiences. And as we begin reading this chapter, the psalmist is demonstrating that the people of God are happy people. Are we happy people today? Well, are we? Are we happy people today? We're blessed. But are we, are we happy because of the blessing or the blesser? Amen. And so he's demonstrating that the people are happy people. I keep thinking of that song, we are happy people. Yes, we are. Amen. We should be happy because we've got something on the inside, which the Bible says is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Maybe we're not full enough to where we need to be happy sometimes. Amen. So you got to love this. Uh, nobody has to, you know, I, I remember... Uh, I remember uh, they, they used to tell, somebody used to tell, they, they said, that he, uh, this preacher, I, I can't remember which one of the elders it was, but it may have been Brother Don Johnson. He said something, said that uh, the only drugs he ever took was uh, when he went to church. He said they drug him to church. <laughs> but he developed a love for God. And I, I, I can't, I, I can't ever think of a time growing up in my life. There, were, there may have been occurrences that may come up that I didn't, at times, believe it or not, as a kid, I, I may not want it. I was tired or maybe something come up and I didn't really want to go. But I can't think of a time where my dad and, and my mom and we fought over going to church. Um, we, we have a dear friend of ours that uh, her, her mom and dad, it was brought to my attention, you know, uh, they were an evangelist and, and uh, these two uh, young ladies that we grew up with, uh, they were going to a youth rally, and uh, their mom and the, the girl didn't want to go to the youth rally, and she fought them, and they said, well, you just stay at home, and, and uh, we'll deal with this when we get back. And she said, I don't ever want to go back to church. And, and uh, anyway, the, the mom and the dad and the other sister went to the, uh, the rally, and uh, on the way back from the rally, they were killed in a car accident. And uh, left the girl at home. If she would have went with them, uh, then she would have been in that involved in that accident and would have went out to meet her reward. To this day, to my knowledge, she's not even in church. But I thought about, you know, I've never fought uh, going to the house of the Lord. I've never woke up and said, well, I just don't care. Now, there's been times I've been sick or I didn't feel good and maybe... Something had come up, but I can't ever think of a time where I just said, I'm just not going. I don't want to go to the house of God. I want to go. God has always given me a desire and a love for the house of God. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that today? Give the Lord a praise. Amen. you got to love this. And um, this is what David was saying. He said, we're happy people. We're blessed people. People who love God, but who God loves as well. I, I come because I love God, but the most important part about this is I have a God that loves me too. I have a God that died, as I mentioned, for my sins. And, 
And he took stripes, he took the beating, he took torture, he took pain, he took agony, he took the thorns. He bled on a cross and, 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 uh, and it, it, I, I just, I, I've got to do everything I can to love him back, you know. And it's just not enough to just pray and uh, to read my Bible. I've got to come to his house and I've got to worship him. And, but I love to come to the house of the Lord, amen. I love to come and worship the Lord. I, I love riding down the road and seeing the beauty of God's creation, knowing that my God created all of that. Amen. And so only a few in this world take uh, the right way and the right path. And David was acknowledging the happy people, the blessed people in Psalms 119. He was talking about that path of righteousness. Now, the, the book of Matthew 7 and 13 through 14. The book of Matthew 7, 7 and 13 through 14 says, Enter ye into the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go uh, enter, enter it, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life. And few there uh, be that find it. I'm thankful that I know the way today. Amen. Aren't you thankful that you know the way? Praise God. When you love God, the world, or the word rather, when you love God, the word becomes not just a law are a set of rules. Look out. The Word of God is not just a law and a set of rules. Amen. But it becomes life. This is life today. Some people look at it, oh, it's just a bunch of rules that I have to follow. No, it's direction today. It's salvation today. It's hope today. It's life. And so we must walk and the ways of God's Word. Amen? He gave us a plan. And I've got to walk in the plan, the ways of the Lord. Now, I know there probably have been occasions where Brother Adam and Brother David may could have built something without a plan. They probably got it in mind. They got the measurements, but they have to have some kind of uh, thought process as far as the measurements to put something together. Look, you always have a plan. And something, God had a plan, and this was his plan, and we got to walk in that way. Walk in his plan. It's not of the ways of the world or the ways of our own hearts, but it's the ways of God. See, this is God's way, and it's not our way. You made it very clear, Brother Mike. You said it best. The reason I can't believe what they believe is because they don't believe what God's Word says. Amen. And so Psalms 37 and 4, Psalms 37 and 4 uh, says that word again, delight. It says to love. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He'll give thee whatever it is you desire, amen, if you uh, delight in the Lord, if you love the Lord, amen, and your desires of the Lord, amen. And so uh, the saints of God who are going to make it through are the ones um, who love this, amen who love the Word, who love God. Amen? And so uh, we, you do what you do because you love it. Amen? You do things in this life because you love it. Amen? And I can think of things that uh, maybe I have done in my life that somebody asked me to come do or to see, and it wasn't enjoyable for me, but it was for them because they loved it. But I can think of things that I might have liked to have done that they didn't like, but I enjoyed it because I love it. Amen? And so uh, we find that uh, if you have to beg somebody to come to church, uh, plead with them about living right, uh, beg them to worship, beg them to give to God, um, they don't have the genuine love of God that I have. Amen. Uh, those that have the true love of God in their hearts, amen, they are conscious. Amen. Conscious of what's going on around them. I am conscious of what's going on in this world because I love God and I love His Word and I know what His Word says. Amen? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but there's a lot of unconscious people walking around thinking they know what they what, the right thing and, and, and who's this and who's that, but really they're unconscious because they don't know the Word of God uh, like you and I do. Matter of fact, that conscious unconscious can lead to those consequences. Amen. People don't understand or realize the consequences of not living and loving and serving God. I, I'm thankful today that I know 
uh, not only the truth but the word, but I know uh, what the consequences are if I don't obey the word and I don't love God and I don't have God in my life. And so people today, don't, don't people today seek recognition? Now, I'm sure Brother Ryan probably said, look, please, it's been a long time since I've won an award. I, I need this. But I don't want people to look down on me. I don't want to think I'm a bad teacher. Please, y'all recognize me, honor me. Let me be the one. I hadn't got it in a while. I don't think Brother Ryan probably did that. I don't think he did. I wouldn't think so. I think it was well-deserved, and I think he was just recognized because, recognized because he did a good job, and he was honored because of that. But some people seek recognition. I know people, if they don't get recognition, if they don't get honored, they get hurt. I've always been taught that the best recognition and honor you can receive is not from man, but from God himself. God's going to bless you. Uh, whatever it is that you do, I don't care what you do in secret or what you may do in front of everybody, God is going to bless you. The Bible's already taught us basically, and I'm just breaking it down as simple as I can put it. The man that waves the $100 said, hey, I got $100 to put in here today uh, versus the man that didn't have the $100 to put a dollar in there, didn't say a word. That man with the dollar is going to be more blessed than the man with the $100 because God honors those that get glory out of him instead of out of themselves. And so people seek recognition and honor and glory from man. John 12 and 43. John 12 and 43 says it this way. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. I'll tell you what's wrong with this world. They want the praises of men instead of the praises of God. I'll tell you what prayer request is all about. is giving God the glory. When I pray a prayer, I have a need. I say, God, let it be for your glory. If you need healing for your body, God, don't just heal my body because I need it. But God, heal me to where I can give you the glory, the praise for it. I, I want to, I have a vision of, and, and I keep saying this, but I mean this with all my heart. When I pray for Jerry, and I told Sister Barbara this, I pray that I could see that man walk in here and lift up his praise and say, I want to thank God for healing me for the glory of God. I think when you pray that prayer, you got a better chance of receiving an answer because it's for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. It's the effectual prayer of the righteous that availeth much. That much is the glory of God. He's, he's in it. Amen. And so uh, Psalms 119 and 26, as we read, I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me teach my, me thy statutes. In verse 27 we read, Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. David declares this uh, great intimacy. He has a freedom. Now, I'm not, David wasn't held captive, but David acknowledged the freedom that he had to worship God the way he wanted to. Now, what I mean is, is um, Michael, she, she, she was embarrassed when David brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem because he was dancing and carrying on and making a scene, just worshiping God, and it embarrassed her because she was, David was in misery, living a life without the Ark of the Covenant, living a life of depression, and she was enjoying that, just living in the, the palace and being the king's wife and just living it up and having a good time and having socials and, and, and all this. But David was never happy, but he, he became happy. He was happiest when the presence of the Lord, when he was in the presence of the Lord. And so when the Ark of the Covenant, he brought it back. The Bible says, man, he just threw a fit. He just had a Holy Ghost hold on, a fit, just worshiping God. And she was peeping through the window, and she, she was... Uh, so embarrassed, and she's like, you're making a fool of yourself. This is ridiculous. But see, David, David, they, he developed something in his walk with God. Uh, I know uh, that it was all about worship and praise, but he developed that appreciation for the freedom that he had uh, to worship. And, and I think that's where we're at today is it's not so much about coming to the house of God, being able to open the doors as it is to have that freedom to do and worship as we please. And so David, he was with God, and David is declaring that his heart is open. David was declaring every time he worshiped God. You know, when David came with that Ark of the Covenant, David had a sign, 
on his chest that said, Open for business, God. Open for business. God, I'm open for business. Come on in, and I want to worship you. And many people don't want to do that when they come to the house of God. You know, people, when they walk in and they don't lift a hand or they don't work, they just kind of sit there like a knot on the law. Don't you hear preachers, pastors, evangelists say that all the time? Uh, you know why? Because they got the sign on them that says, Out for lunch. Amen. Be back later. They don't have open for business. Open for business is somebody that's just got a love for God. You just can't help yourself. You get excited. Uh, have you ever just wanted to get to the house of God and testify and tell about something that the Lord has done? Matter of fact, some of you, uh, you can't contain yourself. You can't, you can't hold it in. You can't wait to the next service. You're going to call pastor. You're going to call some other people and say, I got to tell you what happened today. I'm looking forward uh, for some of those phone calls. I've got to tell you, Pastor, what happened today because I know that there is a love that you've got for God that God has already blessed you and given you something that you want to give Him praise for. Would you give the Lord a praise today? So David said, I'm open for business. I'm not closed. He loves the freedom that he has to worship God. Are you thankful for the freedom and liberty that you have? I have had people to tell me that I have been to a church and I got a little bit excited and I jumped up and down and after it's over with, they called me back to the office and said, you can't do that here. Not at this church. If God tells you to jump and you want to jump, then you jump. If you feel like running and the Holy Ghost gets all over you, you just go ahead and run. Do you know people that they don't give a flip what somebody thinks? You know, they're they going to do it anyway. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be somewhere. I, I've been at other places, but I, I, Kentucky's on my mind. When I come there, I spot out those. I, I know those four or five that I'm like, and I've even told my wife, I've told other people, said, you watch that one, you watch that one, watch that lady right there, watch that. Watch what happens after the first song takes off, and boom, she don't care. Matter of fact, you can say, hey, look, kind of keep it calm. we got the governor here today. She don't care. She's going to she's gonna worship God. She's going to praise God. And, and, uh, and, and, and I, I, I'm telling you, she's, she's probably, she's probably going to be watching this, and what up, Sister Peggy, amen? She's going to worship her God. Amen. I was thinking of her, and there's others, but uh, I, I thought about Dad's story that you've heard a hundred times, and I'm going to tell it for the hundred, hundred one time, you know. Uh, but anyway, that lady, they told her, uh, uh, she, they said if you, she loved those old-timey blankets, and they had dignitaries coming to that service, and she's the one that would do uh, the whirly bird and just start shouting and, and doing all that crazy stuff, and, and that, that pastor told her, said, look, we got dignitaries here tonight. Let's not do that tonight. And said, if you can just kind of hold it off one night. Said, we got a blanket that we're going to give you. This lady made is real nice. And they showed her the blanket and everything. So she sat there. And the first song, she kind of sat back. The second song, she was a little calm. And about the third song, she stood up and yelled at the top of her lungs. She said, blanket or no blanket, I'm going to worship God. <laughs> what that is is she loved this so much, she didn't care about no blanket. Amen. You got to love this so much, you don't worry about somebody else. Amen. And so make me understand thy precepts. Verse 27, teach me thy statutes. David, he, he wanted to be taught more. In other words, I want to learn more. I long for more. Anybody long for more of God? I want to learn more about God. It's a love that is growing every day. It should be something growing on you every day that I'm learning to understand more about. You've got to love the Word of God. And so before you will live it, you got to love the Word. Amen. If you have to beg people to live right, do right, dress right all the time, you're going to bang your head up against the wall and then some. People have to love God and love the Word. Oh, I love God. Well, then keep my commandments is what God has said. That's what He said. You've got to love this. You can't live truth until you first of all love truth. you got to love it first. Everybody say you got to love it first. Amen. I, I, I think about uh, I, I think about Brother Jeffrey right here. He probably didn't just 
Well, I'll take that one right there. Just sign the papers, whatever. He probably had to test drive at first. And he probably test, test drove several others, I don't know, and that was the one he liked the best. He loved that one. Well, look, I have, I've been test driving this word for years. Matter of fact, Brother Red is an old model, but it's still running. I think I'm going to keep this one. Amen. It's like somebody said wine and cheese. The older it gets, the better it is. Amen. I'll just hang on to, to this. Amen. I, I don't think I'll trade it in. I, I've gotten some offers to, to let down, and uh, you could get more people. You could probably have more money. You could do more things. Hey, you could probably put a big old gymnasium out there. I've had some offers, but you know what? I think I'll just stick with the old model right here. It's still running good. It still gets me to where I'm going. It's still going to take me to heaven, amen? And, and I think I'll just keep the one I got right here, amen? Mama tried to sell her house. She thought she wanted to sell it, and then they, they were going to renew it again. She said, you know what? I think I like this place. I think I'm just going to keep it. Amen. David said, make me to understand thy precepts. I think what David made him so unique was not the fact that he asked for forgiveness, and God forgave him. Not that he was such a worshiper, but I see that in those areas of weaknesses in David's life, his prayer to God was, God, would you strengthen me more in those places where I'm weak, in those places of failures, in those temptations and things that I'm having trouble with. I think we need to pray that God would give us strength in those areas, that he could overcome these things. Now, Deuteronomy, everybody, if you'll turn there to Deuteronomy 33 and 25. Deuteronomy 33 and 25. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy day, so shall thy strength be. I, I kind of fumbled on this the other day, and I, I looked it up, and boy, you can make a big mistake when you look something up because you're going to sure get something out of it. It's kind of like the ketchup. Anybody ever run out of ketchup and you're down to the last drop? You're not going to give up on it. You're just going to shake it and shake it and shake it until you get something out of it. And so I began to shake this scripture a little bit. It said, make my shoes to be like iron and brass. And I looked that up and said, what in the world has that got to do with this. In other words, let me walk through some things. Think about it. Iron and brass can go through the fire. I can walk through the fire. I can go through the weather because it won't rust or corrupt. It won't tarnish. I can go through the rocky places if I got iron, I got brass. Amen. So God... Help me work, David said, on those weaknesses. Give me strength in places that, that I may trod and I may endanger myself. David prays that God will prevent him from falling into sin anymore and familiar traps. The more you keep doing the same thing, the more you start to settle into it. You want to reside and stay there. We don't need to, to stay in those places, but we need to move away from them and so David said, give me strength that I can overcome uh, those weaknesses that I have. If you have something you're dealing with, or you're struggling with, ask God to give you strength that you can overcome and, and deal with those. Psalms 119.30 that we read, he said, I've chosen the way of truth, and the judgments laid before thee. I have stuck into my testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of the commandments. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. In other words, David was saying, regardless of what I'm, I, I, regardless of what happens, I'm going to choose truth. I, I must choose to walk uh, in this way, not because I don't know any other way, but because this is what I know about you, God, and your word. Amen. We don't need to do this just because Grandma did it or somebody else did. You need to do it because you love God and you want to do it. Amen. And so David said, I've chosen the way of truth. It, it, it's what I desire. You've got to desire this. Uh, it's my decision. It's not anybody else's choice. Everybody say choice. It's my choice. And so 
you can influence someone, you can encourage somebody, but this is all about making the right choice. 2 Samuel 10 and 9. 2 Samuel 10 and 9, one scripture, and I'll spare you the, the whole entire story, but when Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him, before and behind, he chose all of the choice men. Everybody say choice. The choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians, the enemy. The enemy had them backed up in the front and in the back and all over. And so the Bible says, what did he do? That he chose, he went after his choice men. Choice here means his best. Amen. He knew that he was up against something great. But he knew who his choice men were. Praise God. The warriors, the proven, his choice men, the ones I can trust. He has men who could be challenged and, 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 and just uh, accept the challenge. And so they were the men, these choice men. If you go back and study the Scripture, they were men who loved Israel. They loved the Word. They loved their king. And they were willing to die for their country and for the cause. Come on, everyone. You're a chosen group today, amen? You're the choice men and women of the day, amen? The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm thankful to be uh, one of his chosen today, amen. He chose me out of sin. He chose me out of darkness. He chose me out of all of the others, amen. Praise God, give the Lord a praise. I, I, I was putting some grades in uh, the uh, a computer and uh, I, I had uh, the, the, uh, my phone on and I, I, I was getting these little news alerts. I, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a proud... Uh, a person who uh, uh, that watches and listens to Newsmax now, amen. It's all about <laughs> Newsmax. And uh, they had a documentary that kind of caught my attention. It was on Elvis Presley last night, and he said that this man was his hairdresser, and he pulled him in. He, he met him for the first time, and he uh, the the man walked in. He said, "I'm here to do your hair." And he, he was, like, shocked the fact that he, he was going to be working and doing Elvis's hair, and he was nervous, and he did all these movie stars and stuff, and said Elvis just quickly, he just he stuck his head under the sink, put a little shampoo on that, and the man was watching him thinking, wait a minute, I'm the hairdresser, what's going on? And he said he took a towel and wiped his hair and said that uh, 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 he, he turned to him and said, okay, he said, let's get to the, the cut through the chase here. He said, I, I just need somebody to talk to. He said, I, I heard you're a Christian, and I just want to talk to you. And he said, I got a question. And he said, I want to ask you. And, and the man was like, well, how did you know that? And he said, well, I've talked to somebody that said that you talked to them about God or something. And, and, and he said, I just got a question. Elvis said, I got to ask a question. And he said, well, what is the question, Elvis? And uh, he said, that question is, he said, why did God choose me out of all these people to be a great singer and a superstar? He said, and I'm not happy. He said, but why did God choose me? And I thought about that, and he said, for three hours, they talked about trying to answer that. He said, well, God has a plan. God has a reason. God won't, you know. And, and, and for three hours, he said, he talked about that one question, about why did, God, why did God choose me? And he said, well, God don't necessarily choose people to, to do things of the world. He said, and, and I like what the man was saying. You know, he said, I, he, he chose us to come out of darkness and to be a light. And he said, I, I think what you're interested in that you're seeking is to try to be a light. Uh, you seem to be in darkness. And so I thought about that. Why would God choose you? Why would God choose me? When he was on that cross, he had us on his mind. Why would he take the time? Now, that was Elvis talking about his career and fame and glory. But I'm talking about why would God choose little old me and little old you, amen, out of everybody. He chose us, amen. We're a chosen generation, amen. And I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to benefit from uh, this 
this act of desire that, that God wants. David chose things in his life that benefited God. Can we choose the things in the next day ahead that will benefit the kingdom of God? I think it's very important in the day in the future that we live in and the next days that we face that we choose some things uh, that, that are of God and His kingdom. Can we choose today? And I, I preach to America here. Can we choose love over hate today? Can we choose faith over fear today? Can we choose to be righteous when the world tonight uh, rather is, does not want to be righteous? Amen. Uh, and, and, and they want to thrust themselves into evil. I tell you, I still choose uh, to be a Christian. I choose to do the things of God. Amen. I want to make the right choice because... I, 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 I've got you, I love God, and, and, and to do those things, you've just got to love this. Would you give the Lord a praise? Amen. May, may, Psalms 119, 35, Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. My mind is made up. David had his mind made up. I, I, I don't think he did when he fell into sin, but I think after what all that happened, he lost a child, and, 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 and you know, uh, he, he, he made his mind up. I, I want to do this. I want to go God's way because I love the Lord. He's been good to me. Has God been good to you? God is so good to me. Amen. I've seen what God is all about, David said. I've seen what he's doing. I know that he loves me. I see it. I admire it. And I can see him clearly now. Sometimes you don't see the Lord as clear until sometime down the road. But I see his purpose. Sometimes I don't understand it, but I see his purpose. I see his will. I, I, I have found a jewel. The Bible says we have found a treasure today. Amen. Something valuable in my life. I'll take care of it. I'll cherish it. Uh, I, 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 I want to, to take it and put it somewhere special. Amen. And that place is not on the shelf somewhere, but in my heart, in my life. Verse 35 said, The path of thy commandments, they are termed the paths, because paths are narrow. Paths are short, paths are straight. Clean passages for people on foot. On a path, you could only go on foot. David referred to the path, and Jesus was talking about the path of righteousness. You didn't bring horses and carriages and wagons on small paths. Horses, when you look this up, and carriages represent the things of the world. You don't bring those on the path of righteousness. I go by foot so I can follow your path. I can follow Jesus better on a path than I can just wide open out on a road somewhere. And such is the way of the Lord with the flesh, the highway, uh, the, the, the roads of life are the flesh. And the flesh is like that road that we trod and travel upon. And it's broad and it's filthy and it's crooked, it's trodden by others, and everybody's taking that road because it's the popular, it's the way to go. But I'll take that road that's less traveled, that road that I can follow Jesus better because he's laid out a path for me, amen? And so I think of Robert Frost, that the popular poem that he wrote. That, uh -oh, must be time to quit, <laughs> amen. No, I'm just kidding. Praise God. Amen. Anybody heard of Robert Frost? I'm not going to read the whole poem, but I like that part. And I, I read this um, when I, I, I graduated. And um, I, uh, when I was a co-salutatorian, uh, I, I, I read this in my speech. He said, two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I want to take the one less traveled. Nobody wants to go the road of Jesus because they want to be out there where everybody's at. Would you stand today? They want to go out where everybody's, where it's all happening at. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to pay the cost. Amen. The path is the path of thy commandments. I, I'm thankful for the old paths that have been, I, I could probably go on a tour. We need to do this, I guess, one, one day. But the Lord, I, I'd like for you to show me some of these old places. He probably still knows some of the ways and the paths. But I'm talking in a spiritual sense here, some of the old ways of our ancestors and relatives. Let us try our very best to find that those paths are not grown up, overgrown with weeds and brush. Can we still find those ways that they went 
I, I don't want the easy way out. If I got to pray myself out of a situation, if I got to do what it is I got to do in God's Word, if I got to hang on and have faith, if we got to have a, a, an all nighter to do, to get, there were people that would come and they'd, I've heard of stories where people walk up to the pastor and say, Look, I just, I'll lock up in the morning. What? Because I'm not leaving until I get an answer. What tremendous faith. And then they might show up on the doorstep and say, I got my answer. It was about 4 o'clock this morning. God healed me. God touched me. Or God sent. I've heard of stories. The old past I'm talking about. Where somebody come walking up and said, God told me to come. Showed up and preached revival and had one of the greatest outpourings of the Holy Ghost because God sent them. I've heard of those stories where they come knocking on somebody's house at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and say, God led me to this house. I don't know. I'm just here and said, I'm supposed to pray for somebody. Come on in. My baby's got fever in here right now. I believe God has sent you. I don't know who you are, but come on in and pray. The baby get their healing. The man leave. Testify about it. I don't know who you're talking about. There's no man that I know of has been in this area. Where's the kind of past, the faith that once was? It's past tense. Somehow, for our future, our children's future, our future, this church's the future, America's future, somehow we can't be stuck in the past tense. We've got to get in present tense and see some of these things happening today so that we can, I, I think that, I, I am not, you know, one of those that's uh, hallucinating or caught in uh, the, uh, the world of make-believe. I still believe that the greatest end-time revival is on the way. And what that means is not to say that, woo we had an end-time revival, you know. But what it is to say is that somebody that you love got the Holy Ghost in that end time revival. Somebody that you know that was sick in body got their healing. It's not about, well, Victory Apostolic Church, well, we had, man, we had so many got the Holy Ghost, so many baptized and all that. I've I, I been burnt on several messages where they preach. I don't, I, one preacher, he's like, don't, God forbid that we get on Facebook and promote or toot our horns and say, well, this many people got the Holy Ghost. I baptized 20 a day. Woo! -hoo! All that. You've just took everything that God did away out of his hands and put that uh, put you on a pedestal. I'm excited, but I want God to have the glory, amen. amen. I want that kind of revival, amen, that's going to take place. And the enemy is trying to cripple. The enemy is trying to cloud our minds with doubt that it ain't going to happen. We're living in different times. But that doesn't change. What we're saying is God's not the same because of a new leader or a new government or a new this and a new that or a new outlook or because we don't want to have, because of the virus and all that. Let me tell you something. God has not changed. Amen? Amen. We are the ones that limit God. I want to make God bigger than he's ever been. He needs to be in these last days. He needs to be bigger than everything. The path is the path of the commandments. The path is the path not the public road that everybody else has taken. The path where no beasts go. And the men said to them, we've got to go. We've got to, we've got to face our adversary at times. God, I love this way. I love truth. I love your word. I love this church. Amen. Let me walk in your light. Amen. Help me to continue. Amen. you got to love this. Amen. Would you lift up your hands? Can you just love the Lord just a moment today? Come on. Can you love him? Do you love him? Come on. Oh, Brother David, I love him. Prove it. Come on, prove it. What do I do? You may run, you may jump a pew. No. Won't you just tell him how much you love him? Won't you tell him how great he is today? Won't you brag on God just a moment? Come on, you, is it all right just to magnify and lift him up today? God, I just want to tell you how great you are. I just want to tell you how mighty you are today. I just want to tell you, God, what an awesome God that you are today. God, you may not have touched my body today, God, but you're still great. God, you may have not provided, Lord, that little extra income I thought I was going to get this month, God, but you're still a great God. God, you may have not, God, brought my family in and saved them, but God, I'm still going to praise you because I know that you're going to do it in due time, God. God, I know that you're able. You're more than qualified to do what it is that you can do, Lord. In Jesus' name, I love you today, God. Come on. 
Do you love this today?